Hello, and welcome back. Today, we're gonna make a hidden shelf storage. Hidden shelf storage. The shelf won't be hidden, the storage will. All right, let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab a box. And this is going to be our pocket, the pocket of the drawer where your stuff will be hidden. So we're going to make this the dimensions that we want. These are my dimensions. You can make yours whatever you like. And we're going to make this 90 by 110. Let's recenter that. Okay, and now we're going to need to make the outside walls. And the way that we're going to do that is to duplicate this turn it into a solid and then let's add because I want three millimeters on either side so I want the walls to be three millimeters thick so what we're gonna do is add six that way we have three on this side three on this side three on this side we're gonna add six to both sides so this is easy enough 116 and 96 okay now we can go ahead and align those and now we want the base to also be three millimeters thick so we're gonna bring this up three millimeters, one, two, three. All right, and let's go ahead and group that. Okay, there we go. Three millimeter walls and three millimeter bottom. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate this and move this out of the way for now. And we'll just focus on this part, which is gonna end up being the actual shelf. Now we want the storage box to be able to fit in here, so the way we're going to do that is make this a little bit bigger. So let's ungroup that, and then we will add 7 to all the sides. So this will be 123, and this will be 103. And then we also have to add 7 to the inside pocket, so this will be 117 and 97. All right, let's check the alignment on those. They should still be aligned. Perfect. Okay, and then we can go ahead and group those. All right, now as you see, it should fit right in there with about a one millimeter gap all the way around, and that's for clearance. Okay, now we also want the shelf to be able to go up in there and not be visible. So we're going to make the shelf a little bit thicker than the storage box. So let's go ahead, we'll just add two millimeters, that's fine. This should still be three millimeters up, so that should be good. So we'll go ahead and group that, and there we go. All right, so we're going to need a way to mount this to the wall, so let's move this one out of the way. And we're, what we're going to do is add like a face to this. So we're going to grab a, another box, make it five millimeters, and then this is... 123 so we're gonna want 10 on either side so we're gonna make this 143 now we should have a 10 millimeter gap on either side and then we're gonna make this 10 millimeters taller so that one's 22 we'll make this one 32 and then we can go ahead and align that and then let's just pull it back right there okay and then we can group those now this is the actual part that is going to have the screws through it that mounts to the wall. But I want a little bit more support, so the way we're going to do that is to grab a box, we'll make it three millimeters, and then we'll kind of turn it on an angle a little bit, and then just line it up over here. Right there looks pretty good. Oh, let's bring that back. You want to be in line with the rail. Okay, let's go ahead and duplicate that and move it down. And then we can align those. Click on this one first to make sure that we align to that one. All right, that looks pretty good. And now we can group those two together. Now you see we have a little bit sticking out here, so we're gonna grab another box and get rid of those. Go ahead and group that, and there we go. Perfect. Now we can group these together. Okay, but that's a little bit more support for the shelf. And as I've said before, these lines won't show up in the print. All right, now we need to add our mounting holes. So let's grab that cylinder and do the countersink trick with that. And I'll just fast forward through this right quick.
Okay, now a good way to make sure that these three are all evenly spaced is to align them to the center of the shelf here. And then if we grab one, we can move it over. 22, no, let's go a little farther. Let's say negative 40. Okay, now if we grab this one, we move it over. We want to keep that at a zero, that's the up and down. We can move this over a positive 40, that way we know that they are evenly spaced across the front of this. And now we can go ahead and group those together and then move them in two millimeters. We don't want it to shift this way, so we'll change that back to a zero. All right, and that looks pretty good. And then we can go ahead and group everything here, and there we go. We have countersink holes to hang our screws. It might be a little overkill, you might not need all that for this little shelf, but it is what it is. And that's what it's going to look like on the wall. So let's flip that back, and we are pretty much done with this part. Okay, and now, back to this. What we can do here with the storage box, we first of all have to check to make sure this fits in here. Now we know that we have a three millimeter base, so let's raise this up three millimeters, and then we can go ahead and bring it over. And now look, it sticks up a little bit. It sticks up one millimeter, but we want some clearance, so we're gonna say two millimeters. So let's bring that out. So we know now that we have to drop it down by two millimeters. So let's ungroup this, drop this box down by two, and then regroup it, and there we go. Now it'll fit right in there. If we raise it three millimeter, and it'll still have that one millimeter clearance. Okay, now let's put this back. We need a way for it to stay in there. And to do that, we're gonna use magnets. Now I know that my magnets are six by two and I'll leave a link in the description to those. So we're gonna grab a cylinder, turn the sides all the way up. Let's drop this to an eight millimeter and then we can bring this up to 18. And then we're gonna align this just in the corner like that where it's just touching the sides. We're gonna duplicate that and do the same thing on all four corners. Okay, and once you're happy with the placement of those, we can highlight all of that and group it. Okay, and now we need some recesses for the magnets to sit in. So we're gonna go ahead and grab another cylinder, turn the sides all the way up, bring it down. Now I know that I said my magnets are six by two, but for clearance, we wanna go ahead and add a point to and then this can be any size, just something easy to work with. So let's grab this and bring it over. And we want it just sitting on the top of this. So right about there. And we can play with the placement here until we're happy. And that looks good. So again, we're going to duplicate this and do the same thing on all four corners. Okay, and once we're happy with the placement of those, let's go ahead and highlight all of them and group those. That way we know that they're all moving at the same. Then we're gonna drop it down. Remember, we're gonna add a 0.2, so a negative 2.2. Then we can highlight all of that and group it. And perfect. And now we're almost done with this part. We're gonna need a way to get our hand up in there and pull the storage box out. So what I think will work fine is if we grab a box, bring it down to 12 millimeters, drop it down some, and then just pull it in a little bit. And if we align that to the center and then group those, we should have where we can get a finger in there or a fingertip at least and just pull the storage out. Okay, now we need a way for the magnets to catch in here on other magnets. So the easiest way to do this 
is to grab this. Let's ungroup it again real quick. Let's grab these and make a duplicate and then pull those out of the way. Regroup this. Okay, and then let's bring this over and align it. And then we can grab these, bring those over and align that to these. And then let's drop this down. Just make sure we're aligned, which we are. Now we can get this out of the way. Oops, not that one, this one. And now let's grab these and bring them down until they're just touching again. So right there, and then let's drop it negative 2.2. .2. Then we can group that. And now we'll have magnets here and here. And you know, they'll be grabbing each other to hold this pocket in there. Okay, so we should be good. We should be able to print them out as they are. So let's export them and jump over to Cura and see how they look in there. And then we'll go ahead and print them. Okay, and here we are in Cura and the settings for both are the same. We are on the low quality profile and I have 10% infill and supports are on to protect the square on the one and to protect the mounting holes on the other. Okay, let's jump over to the camera and see how well they turned out and see if we can get the magnets in it and get it mounted and hopefully it works out as it did in my head. <laughs> All right. And here they are printed out. Let's go ahead and test fit them. Fingers crossed that they fit together. All right, that fits like a glove. All right, now let's test fit a magnet before we super glue those into place. Okay, perfect, let's get it mounted on the wall. Now the way I mounted it was by putting that center screw in first and using it as sort of the pivot and then I would swivel the shelf to level it. Now you can put all of your special things in here. I've got my YouTube money in it. Let's see if the magnets hold up. Okay. It's working pretty good. Okay, a couple quick post printing comments I want to make. First off, I've added two finger holes to the end design because Not fun. So now it should be much easier to remove the storage box from the shelf. Also, I've designed a rounded edged version that I will be uploading to Thingiverse in case you don't like the squared version. Okay, if you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. To all my new and old subscribers, I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever. Also, I've designed a rounded edged version that Also, I've designed a rounded edged version. God damn it, English. Also, I've designed a rounded edged version that I will also be uploading to Tinkercad in case you don't like the squared version. Yeah, I'm going to upload it to Tinkercad. <laughs>